first question, um, can you tell us all about you and BioBeam? Me and BioBeam. Well, I'll start with BioBeam because it's much more interesting than me. Um, <laughs> so, so basically, BioBeam, we're based in Cambridgeshire in the UK, and we are the world's largest recycler of spent coffee grounds. So what that means is that we take spent coffee grounds from businesses at every scale across the UK, and we recycle those grounds into a variety of sustainable bioproducts. So those products are include um, coffee logs, which are a domestic fire log for wood burners and stoves. So that's our only consumer retail product. We also do coffee pellets. Those are biomass pellets for industrial commercial scale biomass boilers. That's very much B2B. Then we also have just launched last autumn uh, our first flavor ingredient for um, the food and beverage industry. Basically, we take grounds from a single source through a food grade supply chain that we set up bespoke for, for this purpose. Um, we take those grounds, we extract the remaining compounds from those grounds, and we create these natural sustainable flavors that then go back into foods and beverages. So sort of completing that circular loop, really. Uh, and then we, um, because we've been doing this for a while, and we've gone through the painstaking process of understanding how coffee behaves and how you can process it, um, we are now kind of experts in uh, recycling coffee and providing dried grounds as a bulk raw material that can now be applied to other product innovations um, in other industries. So things like bioplastics, 3D printing, um, things like that. So it's quite exciting the world that BioBean lives in really. Uh, we've been going since about 2013. Um, we've got a team of 30 people now and just lots of plans for the future and going great guns really. And then as far as me, um, I handle the marketing for BioBeam, and uh, I just I have a background in uh, marketing and PR for real ethical brands and, and organizations. That's kind of been my passion, really, um, for life. Uh, and it took a variety of different shapes, particularly when I was younger, as it tends to do for a lot of people. <laughs> now I've really refined that and honed in on, on on what I'm doing now, and I love it. Nice. It sounds like a for BioBeam then, especially with all of the ethics um, and the company values that I've read about online, seems like you're a good fit for it. I, well, I think so. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure they do too. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think it is a great fit. The thing is, the BioBeam team is made up of um, people who are, are who are quite passionate and, you know, even if they didn't start at BioBeam because they were really into sustainability, bio, working at BioBeam has kind of brought that to the surface for them and it's much more prominent in their in their minds and, and, and now, you know, their behaviors may have changed, their mindset may have changed and um, it's just a real passionate team. We're really, we're committed to um, making a a real impact, but at scale. For us, it's all about scale. There's great innovations happening um, in organizations of all sizes around the world, and that's wonderful, and we absolutely support that and advocate it. And we feel that you know, for those to make the biggest impact that they can, it has to be scaled up. And so for us, that's what we're trying to do. Definitely makes sense. I'm brilliant. Um, thanks for that. Um, and Following on from obviously your think when you hear the word sustainable, it obviously means a lot of different things to different people. So it'd be good to hear what you think um, when you hear that. And it gets confused for quite a few different things. Um, and it gets tossed around a bit loosely. For us at BioBean, we, um, it means that it's good for the environment, good for people, but also very much built to last. Okay, I'm getting a message that says my internet connection is unstable. Can you hear anything that I'm saying? Yeah, it's all good on my end, yeah. It's, okay, it's sorry fun. about that. Yeah. <laughs> it's all right, don't worry. I just had you frozen <laughs> and then this unstable message, so. Um, uh, yeah, no, for, again, for us at BioBean, it's just, you know, it's all about good for the environment, good for people, um, but again, built to last. It has to mean built to last. So that whatever positive impact we might be making on the environment and or people, it isn't simply fleeting or temporary. It's really going to be a lasting, a lasting change so that financially we can continue to grow and develop as a business, um, creating greater impact as we, as we move forward. Brilliant, that's great. Um, and so can you tell us a little bit about the story behind BioBean and how it came to be? 
um, and to become the world's largest recycler of, of coffee grounds. Sure, <laughs> sure. I mean, <laughs> yeah, I do love that claim. It's um, we are actually technically the world's largest recycler of coffee grounds, but really we're kind of the only, one of the only ones doing it at the scale. So it's ever so slightly boastful, but hey, <laughs> marketing, right? <laughs> um, <laughs> run, run with it. It's fine. <laughs> Um, sure, so BioBeam was founded, like I said, in 2013, and he, it was founded by a student named Arthur Kay. He was an architecture student, actually, at UCL, um, and he was, uh, he had been tasked with, um, he was working on a project to create a coffee shop with a closed-loop system, and during that project, he noticed the amount of the volume of waste coffee grounds coming out of coffee shops, and thought there has to be something better that can happen with that. Um, material, that resource really. And he kind of had that light bulb moment, you know, where he was sitting in a, in a coffee shop and he had this whole cup of coffee next to him and he saw kind of the oily sheen on top and he thought there's oil in there so that you have to be able to do something with that. And sure enough, you know, he did some research into um, using coffee uh, oil as, uh, as a fuel source. And um, so he took that research, he gathered some advisors and Biobean was born um, and the first product that they were working on were the pellets, the coffee pellets. So basically proving that it could be done um, and again at scale. And so that was 2013. So that's what, seven years ago. And we've grown rapidly since then. We now have coffee collections across the UK um, in the major cities of the UK, really. Um, Manchester, London, Brighton, Birmingham, and then a few areas in between where we're able to work out the logistics. Um, and we have those continuing to grow as well. Um, and again, businesses at every scale are taking part. So it could be a small coffee shop on the high street of London to, um, you know, one of our biggest partners is Costa Coffee. And um, we've been working with them for a long time. So um, it's just, you know, a great program that's going on and, and continually developing. Nice. And how does your day um, as a multi manager fit into that? Obviously, you've got everyone going and collecting all the the, the grounds and um, all of the logistics involved. What does a marketing manager do at BioBean? Yeah, uh, <laughs> a little bit of everything. So I, I am currently a one woman marketing department. Um, and so I have to be a bit of like Jane of all trades, master of at least a few. <laughs> um, and uh, but I, that's, I mean, I have to say, I love that, you know, working in small organizations in general, you know, I, I get to, I get to have a greater voice and, and get my fingers in more, more pieces of the pie or more pies in general. Um, at BioVean, uh, no day is the same. There's always loads going on and it keeps me on my toes and um, it's really interesting challenges and really interesting material to be working with. So I could be, um, Anything from you know creating content, creating a month's worth of social content, or hopefully two months if, if I can if I can get to it, uh, more <laughs> the better, um, or blog content to um, you know creating our marketing strategy to support our annual deliverables and our five year plan to fielding media inquiries or hosting um, uh, a film crew on site to meeting our directors about our internal com sorry our internal communications activities is what I'm trying to say. Um, <laughs> or you know, conducting market research around um, a potential new territory. It's, it's every place of marketing that you can imagine from you know, ad hoc web developments and designing a flyer to the full kit and caboodle, brand strategy, brand refresh. Um, yeah, it, I love it. <laughs> it sounds intense, but rewarding. It's, um, that is it a perfect like... way to describe it. <laughs> <laughs> intense but rewarding intense but I mean if it wasn't rewarding that's... yeah exactly but if it wasn't intense I wouldn't enjoy it you know and and I yeah. think you know with BioBean we are we are still we're not a startup anymore we're definitely in the SME sort of we call it sort of the teenage years really <laughs> we're growing <laughs> well, <laughs> and um I think a lot you know everybody that works at BioBean is kind of uh, along the same ilk, I guess, in that, you know, we all like to get stuck into the things and if it wasn't challenged, we'd be bored. If it wasn't challenging, we'd be bored out of our minds. Yeah, no sense. Yeah, it's like a unique place to work and yeah, I think I might just come work for you guys. <laughs> <laughs> we could do some help. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. Um, next question. Um, how do you approach businesses when you're selling the opportunity of recycling their spent grounds? How does that look um, in terms of that conversation? 
Um, are there different decision makers? Um, is it is sustainability a driver of that? And, and how important is sustainability to the brands that you work with? For example, you mentioned Costa. Um, yeah, a few questions in there, but what, what are your thoughts? Yeah, sure. So um, as far as the decision makers, that really it, it's really um, down to each individual business. Um, the way that it works, um, it, you know, we have sort of bespoke uh, situations for different sizes of business. So you can imagine Cost Coffee has a sort of a bespoke system for them versus, um, you know, the high street independent coffee shops. We work with uh, the existing waste management and logistics infrastructure. There's no point in reinventing that wheel. It's there. It works. It's fine. And we're not in that business. So um, we work with that existing infrastructure to collect the grounds on our behalf and they do so with daily general waste collection so in many cases businesses are approached by their waste management collecting company um, to offer this as a service uh, in other cases um, particularly in the case of sort of the larger business we our partnerships are kind of formed over years you know with different stakeholders within the business so that could be a ceo it could be a head of sustainability um, or it could even be you know that just the, the champion who kind of comes out of nowhere out of a business and is just really pushing for this to happen, that happens as well. So it really does depend on each individual business. And then um, as far as sustainability being a, a main driver or whether that's cost as the main driver, again, that depends on each different business. You know, some businesses um, approach us and they are just so keen to do this because environmentally it's the right thing to do uh, and they feel really passionate about it and it's going to make an impact you know on their um, carbon footprint and on their waste reduction and even uh, often on their costs as well on their waste disposal costs um, and for other businesses it is all just about that and that um, if you remove heavy wet coffee grounds from general waste your general waste then weighs less and therefore your waste collection costs less and because we don't charge a gate fee there's often a savings to be made by recycling your grounds through biobean rather than sending it through other disposal methods so yeah and then i think your last question was about um sustainability and how important it is to to the businesses that we work with again uh, that often depends on 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 each business but we are definitely seeing an increase now in sustainability being the main driver, particularly now in a, in a well, near post COVID world. We're not quite post there, you know, but um, uh, coronavirus has brought about, um, uh, <laughs> I think, a greater increase uh, in interest around sustainability, the circular economy becoming just more ethical in general and doing the right thing for the environment and people. Um, and uh, because of that, you know, consumers have been driving it for a few years, that's increasing. We're seeing signs that coming out of this crisis that we've been having recently, um, that sustainability will be a main driver. And so I think for BioBean, we're very lucky and well positioned to, to be growing and moving forward in that mm -hmm. environment. Yeah. I guess. yeah, we've seen that as well uh, with some of the research that we've been doing into um consumer behaviors and and what people are interested in this sustainability we kind of thought at the start of this is it going to be such a big topic for people or are they going to be more concerned about health implications and um and their own wealth as we go into a, perhaps a recession but we've seen in research that it's actually gone the other way and that people are more concerned and i think that community spirit has kind of driven a lot of changes in people's behavior and it's perhaps given more people time as well to research these things when they're at home and not doing much as you can watch Netflix or different companies that they choose to invest in and perhaps do a bit of research on circular economy so I think um, it's probably gone the opposite way to the way that I thought it would do but um, that's positive thing so brilliant absolutely absolutely so next um, next question, um, what are in sustainability um, or those in marketing roles within sustainable organisations? It's a great question. <laughs> um, no, it's a good question. I would say um, if sustainability is something that you're working toward or driving toward or even just slightly interested in, you're on the right track because it's the way forward. Sustainability is absolutely the way forward. A circular economy is the future and you are getting in at the right time. So well done <laughs> on timing. <laughs> um, I mean, yeah, I, I mean, I, I actually looked at circular, the word circular economy, the phrase 
on um, Google search trends the other day, and it has been drastically increasing since 2013. You can just see this marked, you know, start of a, of a trend upward. Um, and so absolutely, this is, this is the perfect time to get in now. Uh, and because it's not gonna, it's not gonna go, you know, and, and like we were just saying, after, after this period of the coronavirus, I'm all signs are pointing to people, not just consumers, but businesses in general being more interested in this, you know, climate, the climate crisis on top of this, it's just, it's, it's here, it's now, it's happening, now is the time to make the difference. So consumers are going to be demanding it, businesses want further innovation that is more environmentally friendly, and a reduction in costs, and they all can come together. It's not mutually exclusive. Um, you know, one benefits the other. So, uh, yeah, absolutely, timing is perfect. I would say, um, if you are in an organization that is already uh, in the world of sustainability, um, great. Just you know, continue to do what you're doing. Focus on the story. I think that's the, one of the biggest parts is is focus on the story because that will help gain awareness for what you're doing. It will help gain buy-in from your stakeholders. Um, avoid greenwashing. <laughs> Good point. <laughs> it's I, I would say absolutely avoid greenwashing. It, it it might seem like a good idea at the time, but in the end, the truth will fall out. It will come out, and uh, maybe not right away, but eventually, the the real truth will come out. And so, it's just not worth it in the long run. Um, you know, it 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 needs to be an authentic story, um, an authentic, transparent story, um, and that's what consumers are, 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 are asking for and demanding anyway. And they're quite savvy these days. So um, yeah, it's just not worth it. Avoid it um, at all costs, I would say. Focus on your true authentic story. Um, if you are in an organization that is, is not yet on the sustainability bandwagon or is um, maybe slightly interested in it, again, buy in from your stakeholders, focus on your story, little by little, it, all it takes really, um, we fully believe this at BioLean, is that all it takes really is a shift in behavioral mindset. Once that shift takes place, the rest falls from that. And yes, it can take time. And yes, it can seem um, arduous. Um, but actually, that is, that is the biggest step, is the behavioral mind, mindset shift. When that is done, it will, it will all fall out, uh, out, of that, out of that change. So, um, you know, and, and I mean, even if you need a, a simple concrete step to start with, coffee is a really good place to start. It's quite easy. You just, I mean, it is, it is actually really easy. It's a clean segregated, um, material right from the source. You know, you, you're not getting out of, uh, the, uh, the handle or you are, you know, just dumping it out of your filter or where, whatever it is, it's segregated right away. So you just stick it out in a bag, talk to your waste management company, get them to send it to us. It's a quite an easy step. Nice, nice plug as well. Nice, I like that. <laughs> Reaching that point now, there's a little bit of a light at the end of the tunnel. Yeah. Um, so what's next for you guys? Yeah, well, um, for us actually, I, I've kind of been uh, saying it uh, already in, in this chat, um, COVID has kind of come at the least worst time for BioBean, if that makes sense. Um, we are incredibly lucky. Um, over many businesses, actually, that the timing of this has not been so bad for us. Coffee Logs is our, you know, main revenue generator, and uh, Coffee Logs are a winter fuel. So, coronavirus happened at the tail end of our sales season, really, um, and so we were pretty well positioned in in that sense. Coming out of COVID, um, again, we've been talking about this trend toward a uh, focus on more sustainable, ethical brands and a trend towards staying home more often. So Coffee Log is actually well positioned to, to grow quite dramatically. We have high ambitious targets this year uh, for, for sales growth for Coffee Logs. And when it comes to our natural flavor product for food and beverage industry, uh, we we're getting great traction from uh, the likes of international flavor and fragrance houses to um, you know, alcohol distilleries wanting to make, say, for example, coffee flavored vodkas. Uh, so we have a lot of, um, uh, excitement happening around that particular product as well. We have other innovations in the pipeline, of course. Uh, we have a, a technology team who are constantly working on what else can we do with these coffee grounds? You know, what 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 else is in these coffee grounds that is a value that we can we can use and make use of? Um, 
And then of course the dry grounds, that is a huge uh, exciting piece of what we're doing now. And there's a lot of focus shifting toward that, you know, dry ground, offering dry grounds, dry recycled grounds as a raw bulk material for other product innovations. You know, if we can turn, you know, trays into, um, you know, objects that aren't just made with plastic, maybe they're made with partially coffee grounds, you know, just, uh, it's a great displacement for for traditional plastics, um, and again, making use of this material that would otherwise have been considered waste. Uh, so there's a lot of exciting things happening at BioBean. Also, um, we're looking into European expansion. We want to take our business model that's working in the UK really well and expand it into Northern Europe specifically uh, for now, um, just to uh, further our impact. You know, people are drinking coffee around the world, not just the UK. There's a lot of coffee yeah. drunk, and that coffee, when it gets uh, when it gets sent to landfill, it actually sits there creating methane, emitting methane. And we all know methane is a dangerous greenhouse gas and a major contributor to climate change. So by diverting coffee grounds from landfill and instead recycling them, we actually save 80% on carbon dioxide equivalent emissions. So it's a huge carbon savings to be made. And we want to create, and we want to take that impact further than just the UK. I don't know if you're a reader, but um, because uh, hearing the recommendations you've got, uh, I try to be a reader. <laughs> I'm one of those readers who reads about two <laughs> sentences and then falls asleep with the book on my face. Um, I'm a big <laughs> fan uh, of Brené Brown. Um, she's she's brilliant. She's a, a what I guess she calls herself a social researcher. Um, and she, I'm, I'm right now. I'm reading her book called Dare to Lead, and um, I think that, uh, well, a, she's brilliant. You know, she talks about sort of daring, courageous, transparent, uh, vulnerable leadership, and and how that can actually bring out the best in you, the best in your teams, the best, the best uh, in the people that you interact with. And I think actually that um, that applies to business as well. You know. Um, by I Bio mean, we're trying to be kind of leaders in this, in this uh, world of sustainable business. Um, and we're lucky in that it, sustainability is built into the very fabric of what we do. Um, we believe fully that uh, real impact has to happen at scale, um, but that also businesses need to be leading in this, um, uh, in the effort to combat uh, climate change. Because you know, if businesses lead through it, others will follow. They they end up they have to, and consumers are demanding it anyway. As I said before, so um, for real sustainable shift to happen, we believe that businesses have to lead doing that, and I think that that requires daring leadership, daring, courageous, um, transparent, vulnerable leadership. And so I think that Brene Brown's work doesn't only apply to individuals; it it applies to organizations at scale. So I highly recommend, highly recommend her work. I'm gonna, I have heard of her, but I've not read any of her work. So no, I'm, I'm gonna add that to my reading list. Yeah, absolutely. Cool, <laughs> nice. And last question from me, um, where can we find out about more about you and BioBean? Yeah, um, so BioBean, uh, our website is www.bio-bean.com. Uh, you can find uh, coffee logs on Instagram. It's at coffee underscore logs. Uh, somebody got the full coffee logs before we did, unfortunately. <laughs> oh. uh, Twitter is at BioBean. And then you can find us on LinkedIn. Um, again, if you just search for Bio, BioBean uh, and you'll find me there. Brilliant. Thanks very much. Absolutely. Thank you so much for your time. This was actually really fun. <laughs> <laughs>